Welcome back to Newsday. The newly formed security outfit backed by governors in the southeastern part of Nigeria, Ibubayagu, has been criticized for alleged high-handedness in the discharge of their laid-down responsibilities. The group has also been consistently accused of carrying out extrajudicial killings in that part of the country. These charges have not been adequately addressed up to this moment. However, to help us understand in greater details the impact of Ibuagu in curtailing insecurity in the southeast, discuss the politics of Ibongi State, where the group has been very prominent, especially the presidential bid of Governor Dave Umahi, as well as allegations that opposition members, particularly from the People's Democratic Party, are being persecuted for not agreeing to defect along with the governor to the All Progressives Congress. We are now being joined by Mr. Uchenna Oji, who is the Ibongi State Commissioner for information. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much. Now, could you share your thoughts with us about the presidential bid, you know, of Governor Dave Umahi? Are you in support of his aspirations? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me thank also our viewers. Our dear Governor, His Excellency Engineer Chief David Mwes Umahi, uh, in line with the wishes of the best of the people of Ebony State, Line with the, the wishes of uh, men and women of goodwill in Nigeria, has declared that if he does please the people of Nigeria, that he intends to be the president, to contest in order to become the president of Nigeria come 2023. And for us uh, who are watchers who are in a you have seen his track records. We feel that uh, going forward, Nigeria should look at track records of leaders who are corridors of powers who have performed even in the, in the past. Nigeria should look at energy, zeal, and passion, you know, that leaders have. Nigeria should look at those that have zero tolerance for corruption, those that uh, are, are able to give evidence or to show that they can unite this country through their actions and words. And I want to say that the governor of Ebony State has all of these qualities. And so we appreciate uh, his uh, declaration. And we think that this is going to spell a good amen to the people of Nigeria. If we're able to look at what he has done in a bunch state that was the lowest in terms of development among committee of states in the Federation. Within just six years, the man has transformed the state. And today, if you talk about Lagos and Abuja in terms of development, the next state is a bunch state that was just created in 1996. All of a sudden, you're talking about a state with a highest network of road in the whole federation where you can't, Lagos and Abuja, um, a bunch state comes. When you talk about a state with the highest number of flyovers that will, you know, make for investment, attract, attract businesses, after Lagos and Abuja, you come to um, a bunch state. When you talk about uh, the biggest shopping mall that can attract importers and exporters from across the world, you talk about a bunch state as the highest, having the high, the biggest shopping mall, an international airport that will compete, you know, with Lagos and Abuja international airports, is now going on in a bunch state. And so, if a man like this has all this kind of uh, vision, and the vision is coming to reality, I think that if he has such opportunity, Nigeria will experience the same peace, the same bliss as we are experiencing in a bunny state. All right. Will his opposition be able to sing the same song, understanding that, that there are reports that those that refuse to move with him from the PDP to the APC have been witnessing barrages of persecution by the governor? Yeah, in every democratic uh, setting, there is always opposition. Don't forget, in 2015, the governor was to contest. He became the first deputy governor in the history of the world to become governor, or, you know, after the stiffest opposition of the establishment at that time. In 2019, he recontested. He had opposition, then it was APC. And so they were not complaining all of these things. And so this time around, I feel that this opposition is a, a group of uh, desperate, hopeless, people who have lost the touch of the people because 
You know, it's like a conglomeration of the people of Eboy State, those from the old APC joining with the real people of, you know, old PDP coming together, you know, as uh, people of now new, brand new APC. And so I think their problem is that of hopelessness and fear. Otherwise, they were there with the government of Eboy State under PDP. When we had APC that never complained the way they are complaining. All the game that we played politically, electioneering and all of that, we played that together. The formation of the security outfit was formed when we were in PDP that was called Neighborhood Watch. They were part of the people that made all of the nominations. The only difference now is that uh, because of the yearning of the people of the South is that we should have something that is akin to that of Southwest, except in Lagos anyway, that is the Omatuku. Uh, the the government, uh, governments of South East, as it were, met in a way and said, let's have a security outfit that has common, you know, common name with a common mandate and function, so to speak, even though they will have also their jurisdictions. And that is why the governor did last year, you know, establish a security outfit called, called a Bubago. And in doing that, the governor had to establish the law. And in, in the law, we have the, the agency that makes for a Bubago security outfit, that is a Bubago security agency. We also have a board, a governing board for a Bubago. And all the powers and functions and limits are spelled out in the law, that is law, a Bubago law 2021. And I can tell you that uh, they have been working within the confines of the law. But one thing that is very important is that these people are drawn from their communities where all of these um, desperate politicians are coming from. And some of them, we are their nominations. But because they have lost groups, the people are saying, no, we must belong to the party at the center because that has been the culture of the people of, of the Southeast, of course, uh, about New State in particular. And so I, I want to say that members of the public should disregard and discountenance those claims as uh, mere, um, oh, uh, uh, they are merely false, they are baseless, they are irritable, they have got no contention with their reality at all. But the reports we're hearing, even though you're shutting them down, are the exact opposite. They're saying that these members of Ibubagu are barbaric at best. And we, the way, there was even a report about one of the members being beheaded a few days ago out of um, pro retaliation in Imo State. Imo State has been specifically highlighted to have borne the brunt of the extrajudicial killings of this group. So are we just supposed to dismiss those reports? Yeah, let me say that we actually operate an imperfect society, whether in security uh, organizations, in other organizations, even in, um, in Arise. We have also bad eggs. But what is important is that the law provides for dismissal, for recruitment, dismissal, and even termination of appointment of uh, security officials. I'm not going to speak about uh, Amos State. I don't have the competence. I don't have the mandate. But for Bonnie State, yes, we have had a case of extrajudicial killing of even a Bubago. A Bubago official was beheaded, and some others were killed. But we aren't saying it is PDP. But we are saying individual persons that we are involved in the beheading of a Bubago official should be apprehended and handed to, 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 to police for the law to test its course. And that is the why I feel these people should be thinking about. Now, one or two cases where a, an a Bubago official misbehaved, the law has taken its course. The persons involved have been handed over to police. And let me tell you that the, 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 the functions and powers of a Bubago security outfit in Ebony State, they are quite known, they are quite clear, quite specified. They are to gather information, to, add, to gather data on security issues. They are to also document them. They are also to collaborate with security agencies to ensure that uh, the police, the various communities. Let me tell you, Ebony State has been very exceptional in this problem of insecurity in Southeast. You know, when the state actors disturb in other states, especially Monday, sit at home, in a bunch, you said there is no news like that. We go about our businesses. The state actor, non-state actors believe that our governor has done tremendously well. The only way we can encourage him is to, uh, you know, skew all forms of violence in a bunch of state. And that is why you have seen the level of the caring and peace. And so those people come into pages of media, media to, to uh, level a lot of accusations, false as they are, they're on their own. 
Because I can tell them, the law right. court is there, but the high court, the court of appeal, the Supreme Court, if there is any issue, they um, need to ventilate it in terms to of knowing uh, what is done to any person that has committed offence. Yeah, permit me to interject at this point. Certainly you are very aware of a group because people are drawing similarities with the then defunct Bakasi group and they, are, and they are almost putting them side by side that this is almost taking another shape in their modus operandi. And you know how Bakasi ended, certainly you will be able to attest to that. Talk to us about this. That yeah. this is not another Bakasi situation. Whoever is having that allegation, is that the person is buried of information or a person is mischievous? Um, Bakasi, as you know, is a form of, uh, is a, a non-state actor kind of group. You know, that originated as a matter of, um, you know, is a, it emerged as a matter of, um, it's an automatic emergence that came to tackle, you know, those security issues in parts of Abia State. This is a deliberately established, carefully selected group of people nominated. I'm not from, talking about their origin, but their mode of operation. Yes, even in terms of modus of, of, of operation, or what you call modus operandi, and even their modus vivendi you see that they have a law that provides for what they should do. For instance, they are to gather information. They are to collaborate. And I can tell you that they have done more good, much more good than harm. But what you should know is that when the organization begins afresh, like Arise, there were some issues that they didn't get right because of issues of orientations and backgrounds. But with time, with orientation, with training and retraining, you see a level of change. That is why today everything is going normally in a bunny state. I tell you, every evening you see them gathering, working with security agencies to ensure the police our communities, our, our metropolis, our such like towns. So even if you are, you are a government official, you are of a rise, you can always walk in the night and you are not molested. So let me tell you, you need to come. It has to, 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 be, um, to be investigated. That is by coming to a bunny to see for yourself the situation in Ebony State. Ibubago has done much more good than what they are showing in the pages of newspaper. And I can tell you that security agencies can bear uh, um, witness to all of this. So, I, um, thank you for sharing that with us, but <laughs> I think there might need to be some agenda for reform, because obviously you just said that no group is perfect. So, what agenda would you suggest should be in place for the improvement of Ibubayagu? Training and retraining, and also ensuring that um, the bodies are performing their duties, the agencies are carrying out their duties of censoring officials from time to time, getting to know what are the issues uh, in the various communities, getting feedback from the, from the society, from the rural communities, from stakeholders. And the feedback we are getting as I speak with you is that uh, there is a level of uh, ori better orientation amongst the uh, Bubago officials. So they are performing optimally. They are cruising in their performance as I speak with you. And uh, we are very much happy. See, they, 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 they think that uh, uh, militarization or using force is not all the way. The, the way to go is um, engagement. And let me tell you that these Bubago uh, officials are not only securing you know our 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 state they're also helping to engage with um, the non-state actors you know and uh, to ensure that uh, those who are carrying out agitation violently lay down their arms we have given them this as a tax talk to the non-state actors to lay down their arms and they are now gradually laying their arms and so i uh, must say thump up to a bubago in a bunny state all right, um, a recent report by budget listed Eboi and three other states in Nigeria as at least the, in de at the least indebted uh, states and also one of the states that has invested over 70% of its revenue on capital projects. How could this be achieved even as you receive about one of the least allocations here in Nigeria? We have a rare gift, a special gift. A man of extraordinary ability, a man I say that emerges in a society once in every hundred years, mm. in the person of our dear governor. When he came, he turned around situations, but coming to talk about what you said, uh, the issue of uh, performance index has uh, um, continued to you know, make the waves, you know, especially recently. 
apart from the fact that um, in the whole of the 36 states of the Federation, Ebony State come, came first in capital investment, in investing in infrastructure that will bring about economic development. Ebony State came first in the analysis of budget office, the area of transparency and accountability, the area of scarce, um, in the area of prudent allocation of scarce resources. Ebony State came first. I've mentioned three. Now, in overall performance, in fiscal responsibility. The state, Ebony State government came second in the whole states of the Federation, beating even Lagos in terms of you know, overall performance. Now, do you know in the area of viability, that is self-reliance of a state, a state that can be on its own with or without federal allocation, Ebony State came forth. And this goes to show that the governor is a man of prudence. Now, the issue of debt, they made analysis. And they say, of all the states of the Federation, Ebony State came forth that is the, having the lowest uh, debt burden as an administration. In the hell of the Southeast, it is the lowest. And so out of the 36 states of the Federation, Ebony State came 33 in debt status. And this goes to show that Ebony State is known for prudence, is known for, for zero tolerance for corruption and for waste. And that's why we feel that if it does have opportunity of becoming president of this country, it can be sure that there will be a turnaround. Because Nigeria has got a lot of wealth. We've got a lot of potentials. But the problem that is the most important problem is the issue of corruption. Corruption has to do with leadership. And so he's going to turn around the situation if he becomes president. And so the secret is all that I have mentioned. And coupled with the fact that he carefully chose his left nose. He must work for the intrinsic value of what you are doing. He must work to earn whatever that you are being paid. Otherwise, you've got to show the way so that another person does come. But then the governor does a lot of quality assurance issues. He does a lot of monitoring and evaluation to show that um, whatever project is committed, that project must you know, the purpose of that project must be actualized. This has really helped a lot. Of course, it does a lot of um, direct labor job to ensure that our civil servants and public servants also participate in the project development process in the state. Of course, it has a mentorship idea whereby technical assistance we are raised, you know, of course, other people we are raised to see how they can be part of the nation building or the state building as it were. I must say that uh, the governor of Ebony State, if given the opportunity, I'm telling you what he has done in Ebony State, I can tell you that that can be replicated in Nigeria. A state that had no road today after Lagos and Abuja has the highest number of roads. And so it is very unique. A state uh, that uh, you know, brought a concept of road construction with concrete pavement, the one you are seeing in Apapa that is done by Dangote. Of course, it has 50 years guarantee. So these are great ideas that the governor has that has made him to be unique so, Chino, in this did. performance index. I want to say thank you for your time today, and thank you for sharing with us several key things that are happening in a body state. We wish you all the best as we get into the political season. Thank you very much. Watching news here on the rise, news plans are still ahead. Just stay with us.